welcome to the second part of this series, session two of um, how to make the world an amazing place for musicians and music lovers. The last session was epic. I'll get into that. But this session is called A Shared Vision, Uniting Musicians and Music Lovers to Enjoy More Creativity, Community, Connection, and Culture. So I'm going to um, fly through a lot of this because I've actually prepared quite a bit for it. And um, I don't want it to go super long. So if I am going too fast, just let me know in the chat. Um, all right. So what's on the slate? What are we up to today? So we're going to go and <clears throat> explore some fundamental sort of questions, which is what I tend to do it, when I'm trying to understand things. I tend to go back in time and try to understand the origins of things <clears throat> and the history of things. And that tends to be super helpful for me. So we're going to explore what is culture? I'm going to share with you an epic ultimate vision of an amazing future culture that we could create. Um, and then I'm going to share a slightly more practical near-term vision that we can create. I'm going to ask the questions, is culture even important? Do we have to care about it? Why, why even talk about culture? Why don't we just play music? Um, what role does music play in building culture? How can musicians and true music lovers unite to make an awesome future together? And then there's a bit of a QA and a at the end if there's, you know, questions or something's unclear or whatever, we can do that. And then I'm also going to play a song. I'm going to relate that back to everything that we're talking about throughout the whole thing. So I think, I mean, I shared some of this in the last thing, but most people will know I'm Mio. I've released three albums, three EPs. I've been playing music for 20 years, I've toured Australia, all of Western Europe, toured with Gautier, Missy Higgins, Claire Bowditch, Tommy Emmanuel, Lior. I work as a full-time musician. Uh, I have a Golden Moment podcast. I do some live streaming on Twitch. And I'm working on a new album at the moment, which is also very exciting stuff. So before we start, a couple of quick little things. So this, these presentations i don't even i don't even know the right word for them whether they're presentations or sessions or but i definitely don't want them to be lectures so i i'd like this to be a conversation because as i'm sharing this stuff i'm also in the process of thinking about it and uh trying to understand it myself so one good thing of actually sharing this information is that it has made me do a lot of research and a lot of deep thinking about these topics and that's actually been super helpful for me but i don't pretend to have all the answers so i'm open to um you know questions comments different perspectives if there's something you think i'm missing or overlooking or whatever then uh please feel free to chat with me in the chat um we'll do a q a at the end uh the usual you know sort of you know be be here be present turn everything off tune in be an active member in chat, answer questions. I will be posing a couple more questions in this session because I'm super interested to hear um, from you as a music lover or a musician, uh, what you think about what we're talking about and have fun. So we're going to go back in time again, like we did last week. Pretty much use this graphic because I love Back to the Future so much, but um, so we're going to do a super quick recap of last week or when, when was it Thursday? So last week we covered what was the role of music in tribal times, AKA culture. So we're going to talk more about culture later, but really that's what, um, music and tribal communal living was, was really culture. Um, we talked about the rise of music, the music industry and its effects on musicians, music lovers and culture. We talked about record deals, you know, record label shenanigans, and then the streaming giants and just how uh, unfair a lot of that is to music lovers. And it also doesn't serve um, musicians. So that was a super quick recap. 
So I wanted to put this out there because later we're going to come back to it. So major label stats and record deals. So for the, the artist tends to lose creative control. Your album can be shelved indefinitely and you have no creative control over that. You're sort of trapped. You lose control with how you interact with fans. Uh, they own your music catalog 100%. They can do whatever they want with it. They own the publishing rights and sell your music in ways that you might not agree to. This is most typical deals. Um, and there's no artist development anymore. It's sort of like your album works or it doesn't, and then um, you're sort of gone. <laughs> if it doesn't work, you're gone. So we're going to come back to that. So this was a thing we um, kind of looked into uh, the other week. So we talked about uh, there's the musician and then there's also the music lover. And these two are the most important part of this equation because all of the energy of the musician has to climb up here, goes to the industry. The industry does, you know, whatever they do to it. And then they push it out this way to the music lover so that the music lover can have a connection with the musician. And the musician in the past it was hard to have an actual sort of ongoing connection with the music lover. Um, so we sort of in the last session talked about, well, is there any way of just getting rid of the industry and sort of wiping out all of this stuff? Okay, it's not important. Well, oh, oh, oh. if you just came in, can you just hit the, hit the mute? <laughs> welcome in, welcome in. Um, and can, can we remove that, that unnecessary industry and have a direct connection between the musician and the music lover and basically bring them closer. So that's sort of, um, so that last thing was called the, uh, the tricky trio. This is called the dynamic duo. So this is the muso. And then this is the music lover. Music lover. And then music can go out to the music lover and then there can be interaction and collaboration <laughs> no worries, Sam. Um, welcome in. Nice to see you, Sam. So the music can interact. Muso can interact with the music lover. And the way that I think about this is that we're going back to that tribal idea of actually having much closer connection with each other without the industry. And we have the tools to do that. So this is less than like, like a weird... Uh, love triangle this actually starts to feel a lot more so this is the musician singing here and these are all people like in a circle in a tribe and it's all happening together you know so the musicians are actually involved in this sorry the the music lovers and this is this is where we create culture so here we have more authentic connection we have actual connection you know there's a relationship that is going back and forth there's um there's uh like clarity and i'd say transparency um hang on um are you saying you maybe not seeing this hang on i've just been drawing it all on this page here whoops sorry about that <clears throat> excuse me um and there's also community and this this picture to me the dynamic duo this team this sort of team and community to me feels so much richer than um sort of having that that triangle of the industry muso and the music lover sort of being separated. And this this seems way more exciting to me. So this is this is the dynamic duo that we'll sort of been talking it we'll be talking about more about today. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Still working out how to how to uh, run three screens and a tablet to do drawing. But I think that's the only bit of drawing I'm doing. So all right. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> so culture. So the the tricky thing about talking about culture, how, how to have a better culture, uh, how to improve culture, is that we rarely think about what culture actually is. And it, it can be quite a difficult thing to describe. Uh, it's an intangible thing. So I'd love to hear from you in the chat. How would you describe culture? What is culture? And how do, how would you improve a culture? How would you know whether a culture is good or bad? You know, we talk about like, bad workplace culture or good culture. What does that mean? What are we saying? Uh, so most of the time we're blind to all of our surrounding cultural norms and the way we relate to each other, the media, music, and the community at large because it's just part of the culture. And you might know if you ever met anyone from another part of the world, <clears throat> you start talking and you you notice that you have different you come from a different culture. You, there are different norms. There are different ways of approaching certain things. There are different taboos. There are different things that are acceptable and not acceptable and preferable and whatever it might be. <clears throat> but what is that? Where does that come from? <laughs> so if something's invisible to us, it's hard to change it. So we want to try and make it visible through here. <clears throat> yeah. So I'm just going to fly through some of this because there is quite a bit here. Um, so yeah, we want to have a healthy culture, not just music culture, but art culture, life culture. So in the last session, I asked a couple of core questions in the beginning, which is what is music for? What is culture for? Um, do we value money or culture expression or, and deep experience or money and fame ethical treatment of all people in the supply chain? Are we trying to make the culture healthier and more beneficial for everyone? <clears throat> Are we trying to hack the taste of music lovers through algorithms? You know, so there's a, there's a bit of, you know, shenanigans going on. So let's talk about culture and what it is. So what is culture? So how important is culture? Do we need to care about it? I think this, this comes up as well. Like once we, Think about culture. Do we need to care about it? Or is it something that just takes care of itself? You know, we, we're not really a part of it and we can't influence it. Um, or do we need to consciously create culture? Do we have to be active participants in that? And what is what is a culture that we would be super proud of? Like proud to be a part of, proud to influence, proud to, you know, help create. And then how do you do that in practical terms? So, so human culture, I mean, this is a huge, you know, uh, topic we could, we could talk about it, uh, go in a lot of depth about this, but in, we, in using basic terms, culture refers to the shared beliefs, values, customs, behaviors, and artifacts of a culture, of a society, of a group of people. So the, the things that we'll focus on here on um, mainly sort of beliefs and values and um, we'll come back to that over and over <clears throat> so what role does music play in developing culture so here you know we mentioned it's about beliefs values customs etc that doesn't say anything about music doesn't really say anything about art it, it mentions artifacts but it doesn't say anything about uh, those creative art forms so what how is music connected to culture? So music helps to preserve culture and heritage and wisdom. We talked a little bit about this last uh, in the last session. It fosters cultural diversity. So when two different cultures uh, are expressing their values, it'll be through their artwork, through their music, through their dance and whatever. And that's how we can transmit and share cultural diversity. Um, it enhances social cohesion. So, you know, performing music together, dancing together, stimulates creativity and innovation. So I've definitely been very inspired by lots of other people's um, music and creativity. It promotes personal growth and well-being, which is something I'm really passionate about as far as culture goes. <clears throat> 
So music has been shown to have a positive impact on mental health and well-being, reducing stress and anxiety and improving mood and cognitive function. That's pretty amazing. Learning to play music can also promote personal growth, self-discipline, and a sense of accomplishment. Music is my dojo. So I actually did a podcast episode where I talked about this idea of music being my dojo. So when when you actually engage in making music, lots of challenging things can come up. And I I sort of have said that music is the greatest personal development, personal growth thing that I've ever encountered. <laughs> because you really have to face yourself and understand yourself and have self-knowledge and self-expression. So many things happen when you engage in a creative act. So Sam and Kevin here will know about that as songwriters and musicians and performers. Um, but I would love to know from you in the chat, out of out of these roles or any others that come to mind for you, what aspect of music and culture do you resonate with the most? Is it, do you value preserving culture, heritage and wisdom, fostering cultural diversity, enhancing social cohesion, stimulating creativity and innovation, promoting personal growth and well-being? What, what part of music and culture resonates with you the most? What feels the most important to you just on a personal level? Um, who are some artists that you think do a good job of developing a positive culture? So we sort of there have mentioned a number of the positive attributes of culture. And there are lots of negative attributes within our culture as well. But are there any that you feel really embody those positive aspects that we just talked about? Um, what are parts of culture that we want to elevate, develop and grow? So this is how we start to consciously think about culture and developing culture and creating a culture that we can all be proud of being a, a part of, you know? So these are some of the things that I thought of that are important to me. So authentic communication through through music and, and just in general, but uh, creativity. So uh, being innovative and trying new things and making new connections. Connection on a personal level, I feel like connection to the music, but also to everyone who is engaging in the music. So the audience or the fans or whatever it might be. And then community. So actually having a space where people can come together and engage and be a part of something. I feel like these are really important aspects of culture that can be cultivated through music and a relationship between the mus musician and the music lover. And I don't know if we do that on many occasions, really. And this is obviously my own personal take on this. And I should say, you know, music is used in many different ways and it's not all about just creating culture. Sometimes it's just fun. Sometimes it's to, you know, be silly. Sometimes it's to dance. Sometimes um, it is just for pure entertainment. So, you know, that's totally fine, right? So important to say that. Um, what parts might me want, what, what parts might we want to reduce or minimize in the culture? So I think in the current culture, there's a lot of superficiality uh, and there's a big focus on the commercial aspect uh, of music, which is, uh, and it's an important part to perpetuate and make music sustainable. And I totally appreciate that. But is it our highest priority? Is it what we want to focus on? All right. So how do we build a beautiful culture that we're proud to be a part of? No, no, no. All right. So we sort of established that culture essentially is shared values and then, sh and then sharing those values. So culture is the glue that connects us all together. It's like a, sh it's having like a shared reality and having shared values. So in a world where everything is becoming increasingly atomized, siloed, polarized, separate, divided, how do we find your chosen tribe? So how do you connect with your own shared values and share them with others? So things that are important to you, how do you connect with them and cultivate them? And then how do you share that with other people? 
who are interested in a similar thing. So basically, in this day and age, our we're not bound by geography being our tribe. We do have the opportunity to choose our tribe, to connect with uh, like-minded people who have shared values that want to build something cool together. So one way to do that is what you're doing right now. Like if you're here hanging out with me now, or you're watching this on the replay, you're obviously interested in this kind of topic. And what I'm doing is I'm expressing a value system that I feel is valuable and important and you're connecting with that. And so if you're digging that, you're already doing this in one way. So uh, you connect with people of shared values. you be part of that community. You exchange energy, ideas, resources, support, care, and culture in a way that benefit, benefits everyone in the tribe. So that's, you know, that's what's being a good cultural ambassador or, a, you know, a, a tribe member um, involves. So we're seeing this all around us at the moment at an accelerated rate because of uh, technology and the internet and us being able to connect in ways like this and social media, et cetera. We're seeing sort of the the fall of, you know, mainstream monolithic, you know, news and media to the rise of a lot of independent media, people who are passionate in um, exploring independent new ways of seeing things and revealing those to the public. Um, there's podcasts on every topic ever. <laughs> uh, there's online learning and courses. We can connect with like-minded people through those things. There are meetup groups. There are communities on social media, Discord, Reddit. Uh, in music, it's the rise of YouTube, social media podcasts, possible campaigns, email newsletters, Patreon, Bandcamp, and others. And I know some of the people here will know this stuff. It's sort of preaching to the choir or it's can feel like old news in a way, but if, um, if we're not utilizing those tools in the way that we can to create great culture, then, you know, we all have work to do. I definitely have work to do in all of those realms, but the exciting opportunity is that all those things are available to us and they weren't in the past. So we can, we now have the opportunity to connect with people that we, um, uh, want to spend time with. So access to our, va our values tribe is what I'm calling it here. Your chosen tribe or your values tribe has never been easier or harder at the same time. <laughs> so one, one thing is that we can connect and come together and do all this awesome stuff, but everyone is sort of disparate and all over the place. And we don't always have like perfect alignment with everyone that we're connecting with uh, you know, online or in virtual spaces or whatever it might be. Um, and in the past, we did have a ge geographical location that sort of hemmed us in to build a culture with those people. So this has to be, like I said before, a, a conscious choice to go out and find those people and be part of those uh, networks and connections and communities. So I'm just going to share quickly how my thoughts have evolved around this. So Sam, I'm sure I've shared this with you, the, the thousand true fans essay by Kevin Kelly. Um, there is a, I'm going to put a link here for it as well. So the first part of this essay, yes, yeah, so I love it. Yeah. Yeah. I printed it out a little while ago. I read it recently. Um, so this really changed my thinking in a big way, which is to be a successful creator, you don't need millions. You don't need millions of dollars or millions of customers millions of clients or millions of fans to make a living as a craftsperson, photographer, musician, designer, author, animator, app maker, entrepreneur, or inventor. You need only thousands of true fans. So his whole essay is uh, if you have a thousand true fans, uh, you can have this connection where there's this uh, virtuous exchange that's going on between everyone because people are into what you do. Uh, that gives you resources to do more of what you love doing and do it at a deeper level. And they're likely to love that even more. You can be consistent. You can have a sustainable sort of uh, creative life is, is a thing. And you don't need to, you know, go on 
David Letterman or uh, SNL or um, Jimmy Kimmel or whoever it might be. Uh, it's in my bookmarks. So I can read it all the time. Awesome. Great. Great. So this, yeah, this had a really big impact on my thinking. So this got me thinking about depth of connection, which is sort of what we're talking about here with the whole thing of like a tribe and culture. It's way more important to all of us than shallow interactions, which we have all the time. So rather than go a mile wide with lots of people and an inch deep, I want to go a mile deep and an inch wide, which is what I'm doing here too. Like I'm sharing an immense amount of detail about how I'm thinking as an artist, as a, you know, as a musician and as a music lover. This is not really what, um, I don't know, like Gene Simmons from Kiss would have would have done or wanted to do or whatever it might be. So, <clears throat> but the cool thing is this, it really works for my, uh, my personality type because I would rather cultivate deep human connection with a thousand music lovers who really got what I was doing and they would collaborate with me, were part of the journey, supported my creative output. I would much rather than have a million fleeting fans where there was no culture really developed and there was no cultural exchange. It was just like a flash in the pan sort of um, experience. I actually feel like a lot of people who reach that level of stardom probably, you know, once, once it wears off um, maybe don't really get that much from it, but a deep human cultural connection to me, is something that feels so sustainable and enriching and, empowering and like a million times better. <laughs> so um yeah when I when I realize that this sort of suits my personality, um, because whenever I meet anyone at a party or whatever, I I tend to just go deep with them, ask deep questions, uh, have a DNM within like two minutes of meeting them. So um so that sort of sh really shifted how I thought about it. So I had to get used to the idea because I was used to thinking that to be a musician, you had to be like massively famous. And that was really the goal. But for me, I would have to say that was like a goal when I was a little kid. But when I started making music and started gigging, there were so many other things I found rewarding about it that um, I really leaned more and more into just doing what I authentically love to do rather than the goal of just becoming famous or rich or whatever it might be. Um, yeah. So I personally have turned my attention to connection, authenticity, transparency, community, communication, and a virtual a virtuous cycle of connecting with people who want to be part of the culture that I'm working on, that I'm developing. Um, that That's one reason. Like if you email me, you'll get a reply if you post something on my social media, I'm going to reply because to me, those connections are super important. They're not trivial. Like when someone reaches out to a musician and ex expressing, uh, you know, it, or it is like a hand coming out. And then if there's no response, that's um, to me, that's not building a good culture, right? Like if you're in a tribe and someone, you know, wanted to share something with you and then you just didn't respond. <laughs> you'd you get kicked out of the tribe pretty quick for being a jerk so yeah that's why i do many of the things that i have been doing for for a number of years now um so one of the best outcomes of focusing on building culture is the people that it attracts so the people who are here right now uh the and the community of my backstage past community also the one cool thing is they get to connect with each other. So it's it's not like just uh, a musician has random fans. The fans become like a part of a community and a group and a, a family of sorts. And then they get to interact with each other. And because they they already have shared values, um, it's a really special, unique connection. So I love it when we do the, um, the monthly live stream when... Um, the backstage pass community gets together and, and chats and in the Facebook group and whatever, that's a, that's, that's creating community. That's creating culture. Um, and yeah, I think it's, it's great 
for music lovers to get to know each other as well. It's like when you go to a concert, a live concert, and uh, the person next to you, you're just instantly friends. Like you don't have to say anything. You're just like, oh my God, you're awesome. We both love this band. We already, you already know, like we have a shared uh, value system, shared culture. So, all right, let's talk about the future. I need to take a breath. <laughs> so maybe there's a good good point to just stop for a second. So if you're there um, in the chat, let me know any any thoughts that percolate to the top right now. Uh, anything you want to add? Any um, any questions? And then we'll talk about the future. Got no questions. I'll keep going. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> so Kevin says, some of what you said about current music reminds of fast fashion. Pe people make, make stuff to be disposable. Yeah, that's a really good point. Thanks for bringing up that example because the example I always have with it is uh, the difference. And I mentioned it last week. The difference between like fast food and then like organic farming or um, closed loop, sustainable ways of farming food. And one, yeah, one of the things is like this fleeting quick thing that you want, like the, the fashion thing you're talking about. And then there's really well-made, really well-tailored, um, you know, beautiful clothes that are really lasting and all of that stuff. So I definitely see a relationship in the attitude towards fast fashion fast food. I guess you can just put fast in front of anything, <laughs> you know, fast relationships, uh, fast money, whatever it might be. Those things are going to take the culture in a particular direction where if you really care about the culture, you want to go in another direction that feels a, a lot more wholesome, sustainable, um, fair, better for everyone. Um, yeah. So great example. Thanks, Kevin. All right. So this is my ultimate future vision. So with this, this is like, I'm just going to frame it because it, it, it might sound quite epic. Um, on, on first listen, it might sound a bit audacious. So I'm, this is like the ultimate highest possible cultural outcome I can envisage through music. Ah, thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Um, and then, and then we'll talk about something that's uh more short term and easier to get to in in a uh in the immediate future. So, this is my ultimate future vision of creating a culture that is thriving and beneficial for all people involved. All people involved. It'll include in it higher shared values of authenticity creativity, connection, community, involvement, growth, development, and positive impact on everyone that engages with it. That's that's what we want. It should increase people's self-awareness of their challenges and their inherent potential to create and share their own ideas and values with the group, to be accepted and encouraged by all others. It would give them the courage to pursue their own highest good through engaging with music, conversation, storytelling, and other forms of expression. And it would give a heightened level of creative activity of different kinds from many different cultural tribes that can overlap and learn from each other to explore deeply many ideas of what it is to be human, to connect with ourselves deeply, and share that openly with others in order to learn from each other and evolve as a species. So that's like a pretty highfalutin, epic, uh, ultimate vision. And I think the last paragraph probably sums it up, um, which is one one perspective I've had um, for a long time about my own creative expression. And I feel this is true for all artists and actually anyone who's 
exploring the world. So this could be, you know, scientists or journalists or um, yogis, anyone who's really exploring the world and goes deeply into that and, and has some type of insight, then they can share that with everybody else. And that increases the culture. So, uh, you know, we're all trying to understand reality. And if we all share our, our piece, our piece of reality, like this is what I see, this is how I feel, this is my experience. And then another person does that and we all do that. Then we start to get a, a much more rounded, more high definition uh, picture of reality. And when we do that, then we can we can transcend a lot of the the issues and problems that we have. So um, that's sort of that ultimate future vision. And that's to me right now that that at times feels very far away <laughs> when I think about the music industry. <laughs> I don't know if that's what uh, you know Sony Music is is aiming for. They're doing something else, which is you know. Um, <laughs> no worries, Sam, you legend. All right. So in that in that vision that I shared, and I would love to hear your own version of like an ultimate future vision of how you can see a culture that you would love to be a part of, that you'd be proud to be a part of and actually really excited and thriving in. Um, so in that vision I just said, there's no talk of record labels, industry, top 40 charts, record deals, advertising sponsorships or contracts. I'm also not saying those those things are are bad or that some of those things are are bad or whatever. I'm just saying um, I prefer this other vision. <laughs> so this is a higher vision of cooperation, collaboration, a circle of virtue, fair treatment of all, and a massively improved system of developing a truly enhanced type of culture, like an awesome culture. So many of our global problems are cultural problems. We have cultural presuppositions that give us unconscious permission to act unethically. So, you know, we we all have these in our culture. Like if you just live in, in a culture where, I don't know, GDP is a really high priority, then that presupposition that that thing is super important gives us unconscious permission to act unethically. And uh, that's not going to lead to awesome things. So we want to rise above that, spread messages of real human experiences and the triumphs of, our own human story and other people's human stories. That's the thing that connects us, you know? So we're all part of the culture, whether, you know, whether we like it or not, whether we think we are or whether we think we're not. So um, we all participate through our behaviors and we can make new choices, which is super exciting. Like if, if tomorrow you had to make a choice to, uh, you know, be part of a, a better culture, or a more destructive culture, you know, you've got a choice. So, and, you know, it's up to each of us. So what would be your ideal creative vision? If you want to put something in the chat, I'd love to love to hear your thoughts, your ideas. All right, here's a more tangible vision. So this is more of like a, uh, you know, a standard definition of um, a healthy creative culture. So the ultimate vision of a healthy culture where musicians... And music lovers both get more of what they want out of music and their relationship uh, is one in which there is a thriving ecosystem of mutual support and collaboration. Like that as a, as a basis, as like a standard would be absolutely phenomenal. That would move us in the right direction, like really, really quickly. So in this vision, in this vision, musicians are able to create music that is authentic, innovative, emotionally resonant, and they're able to share their music with a supportive community of fans who appreciate and value their work. Musicians are able to learn, a, earn a sustainable income from their music, allowing them to continue creating and growing as artists. Sounds pretty good so far. At the same time, music lovers are able to discover and connect with music that speaks to their personal experiences and emotions, and they're able to support and engage with the musicians who create this music. They have access to a diverse range of music and artists, and they're able to discover and connect with like-minded fans and communities. There's a strong sense of collaboration and mutual benefit between musicians and music lovers. Musicians are able to draw inspiration and feedback from their fans, 
and fans are able to contribute to the creative process through engagement and support. Both musicians and music lovers feel a sense of ownership and investment in the music they create and consume, and they are able to build meaningful relationships and connections through this shared passion. Oh my God. So that's that's part of you know the the future dynamic of creating culture together, which is there's really almost nothing there that has to do with a, a big music industry being involved. And there is this beautiful opportunity between artist and music lover to connect and co-create culture, which is great. I love that. So it's, it's one reason um, that being fiercely independent is extremely appealing to me. <laughs> and we'll get to more of that in a second too. All right. So, so if we're trying to find out, I mean, we've covered some of this already, but I'd love to hear from you in the chat about this as well. So some things that music lovers love about music. So the, here are some things that I love about music. So what do you love about music and what do you get from it personally? So one thing is emotional connection, right? So when I hear an amazing piece of music that I connect with, it speaks to me on a level that nothing else really can. Like even having a, a deep conversation about something sometimes is not as uh, powerful as listening to a four minute song by Joni Mitchell or um, oh, who am I thinking of? Tori Amos. <laughs> Um, it can lead to relaxation and stress relief. So music is amazing to relieve stress. You know, listening to it in the car when you go for a walk. Meditation music is a beautiful thing. Entertainment and fun. Um, I'm going to share one of my favorite songs of all time right now. It is Love Shack by the B-52s. This is a song that when I hear it, I start to sprint towards a dance floor. <laughs> it's one of the greatest songs of all time. Uh, inspiration and creativity. <laughs> the best. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, one thing, an album that comes to mind for me with this is um, Shields by, uh, what are they called? Oh, anyway, it's an amazing, um, inspiring, very creative album just takes me to another place um same as uh yushimi and the pink robots by the flaming lips there are just some albums that are very inspiring and creative and take you to a whole new other place um the cultural and historical significance and social connection things music is really powerful in uh connecting humans together uh, like I said before, if you're at a concert and you meet someone, you're just instantly friends. Um, and one thing I haven't talked that much about in this, and I've kind of been skipping over, the is the social connection of actually being involved in music creating. So, um, you know, that can be singing with other people, being part of a choir. I really think that the active engagement of pursuing music, even as a music lover, um, creates a deeper connection with music and with other musicians. So, um, so that's that's something as far as like building culture. I think is really important too. Is that everyone feels that they can be a musician as well. They can participate and be a part of it. Um, and intellectual stimulation. I I find a lot of music, uh, on a on a technical level, very intellectually stimulating just sort of the nuts and bolts of how it goes together and you know scale chord relationships and um chord progressions and key changes and those sorts of things are super interesting to me same with sort of the lyric poetic side of things um so they're the things i love about music but let me know what you love about music met a composer in berlin who ran the festival of the deaf it was rooms full of Fluxus art, I saw it as possible to just live in creativity. No institutional art, just genuine creations. Oh, I love that. Love that, NN. Thanks for sharing it. Love it. All right. So what annoys music lovers? 
about the current pop music industry. We've talked about some of this, but again, love to hear from you in the chat. Here are some things that sort of, I think are taking us in the wrong direction of building culture. So lack, lack of originality, <laughs> a lot of repetition. There's no real message in the music. There's a lack of meaningful lyrics. There's an emphasis on image over talent. Uh, the overproduction of music and auto-tune breaks my heart. <laughs> Commercialization and just having that as the primary focus. Um, and that homogeneity, just, uh, I feel like when we're thinking about like developing culture, I feel like over the last couple of hundred years, music has evolved actually very, very rapidly. Every decade, there'd be like a really new massive movement of music. But I feel like that hasn't really happened maybe since the eighties or nineties. Like it's been a really long time. And I think our culture actually is very stagnant. Um, this obviously this the standout examples and there is creativity, but on the whole, music is is uh, it's very derivative of uh, what's been happening for a long time. Um, listen to commercial radio and flick stations, and you'll be able to almost merge a bunch of songs together like a madly melody mad, medley. So much of the same. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I totally agree. Totally agree. Okay, what do music lovers want? from music and from the musicians that they love. So this is what what I want. And this is also what I've heard from uh, people. I did a survey a little while ago of my email list and asked some of these questions. And these were some of the things that definitely came out. So authenticity, I think, has become the most valuable aspect of a musician's career. And I, th I think it's even more important than quality, which sounds crazy because I, I believe you want to have really good quality music. But I know that I will listen to a musician who I feel is authentic, even if the recording quality, you know, isn't great or whatever. Even if the songwriting, I think, is a little bit naive or something like that, it'll still connect with me if I feel like they're being authentic. Yeah. Um, emotional connection. So I feel like if someone's not really uh, invested emotionally in what they're performing, I feel like I don't really feel it and then I don't invest emotionally in it. Creativity, I think is super important. And um, it is one thing that moves culture forward, but it's also something that uh, for me, keeps me really engaged. So I used to have these conversations with a friend of mine um, and I used to talk about songs that had really dissonant chords, but even at that stage, I didn't really know what a dissonant chord was, like an odd sounding chord. And I used to describe it's like you're listening to it and then it just makes you kind of, you know, your, one of your shoulders goes back and you're almost wincing because it, it just like, it's almost like being on a roller coaster ride and it just takes this turn. And it's uh, it's so exciting. It's so thrilling when a musician uses creativity to throw in a curveball that you weren't expecting. Um, so yeah, creativity is a beautiful thing. Consistency is an interesting <laughs> dissonance. Yes. Um, consistency is also something I feel like is important with musicians. There are some musicians who I would love them to release music <laughs> more often. Um, as far as like staying connected to a musician, I think consistency of some kind is important. Um, growth and evolution. I actually do want artists that I love to grow and evolve. Even if they go in directions, I'm not ready for them to go in. Um, it at least helps me to hear something new and grow and give me as an artist courage to do the same thing. You know, just follow the path that I want to follow, you know. And live performances. So I love recorded music, but I do feel like live performances are a really important thing about musicians that I really do love. All right. So I think we're coming close to the end here, but this, how's everyone going out there? Because I know there's a lot of information we're going through. 
I was worried this was going to be way too much. I was like, I should cut it in half, but um, you know, I want to go deep. I want to go deep with you guys and <laughs> want to process it. I want to process it all deeply and share my thought process with you. All right. So these are the major label stats uh, and record deals that we talked about earlier, right? So now that we've just talked about all of that and we go back to thinking about, you know, major labels, record deals, blah, 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 all that stuff. So there's a loss of creative control for the artist. They lose control of how they interact with fans. Um, they lose control of their mu entire music catalog and they, they can't do anything about it. They can't sell it themselves or whatever. They don't own the publishing rights and the label will sell you music in ways that you might not agree to, even if it's something, you know, selling guns and cigarettes uh, to children or something <laughs> and sending them to war. It's like, oh, I don't want my song to be part of that. There's no artist development. They just pluck you out of the ether. So this is the fiercely independent artist with a tribe. This is what fiercely independent artists with a tribe can do. They can have full creative control, which already makes me extremely, if it was just that, like that's a huge, that's a huge, huge, huge thing towards creating a culture that we want to actually be part of. Um, full control with how you interact with fans. The artist owns 100% of their master, so they can do whatever they want with it. They can sell it and get 100% of all of the income. Um, the artist owns the publishing rights to sell the music in a way that, that feels ethical to them. A tribe supports artist development and they nurture artists over time, which I think is really important, which is the thing that would have happened in, in a tribe. Um, there's a consistent flow of financial support in order for the artists to be able to make plans. There's a moral, there's moral and community support and encouragement which is huge for a musician to know that there are other people around them who have their back and want them to continue. That can't be understated, that last one. Um, and the feeling of giving something unique and creative to a small group of music lovers, for me, has been extremely gratifying. So I have a new album that's going to be coming out this year, and I already know people in my backstage pass will get that before everyone, and I... And I just, I know they'll be excited. I'll be excited to share it with them. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a real gift being able to give that gift. <laughs> um, fiercely independent artists can get feedback on music and, you know, collaborate, can create music together. So we've done that in the backstage past. We've written music together, which is a, like I was talking about before, participation, I think is, is a really uh, beautiful thing to, to involve people in and there's a million other things. So we're going to play some music, going to play some music. And then we're going to finish up here. So we're, we're probably going to finish on time, which would be great. Mm -hmm. I was going to tell uh, a story about this song that I recorded with my band in the past called Lamplight was the band. Mm -hmm. And I wrote this song called Ship in a Bottle. <clears throat> and I wrote it after um, the first or second season of Australian Idol started. So this was a while ago that I wrote this song. And, and it sort of was a protest song against Australian Idol and just what they were doing. And the idea of the song is, so, you know, I've obviously, I've been thinking about this topic that we're talking about now, I've been thinking about it and passionate about it for at least 15 years. So when I wrote this song in probably 2008, something like that. And so in, in this song, there's this, there's this, the, basically the record label, there's this guy and he's putting all these little ships in bottles. They're like this little pre-packaged, you know, protected little thing. <laughs> yeah, I think they're scams too, Kev. I think so. <laughs> Putting this ship in these little bottles, in this little protective bubble, and throwing it out into the ocean. And so it's like a fake ship floating on an ocean, but it's all sort of scammy and it's um it's all 
pre-produced, you know, it's pre-packaged and pre-ordained and all this stuff. But then what happens is after a year of throwing those people out into the ocean, they've got, they have to have a new season, right? There's a new season. So they've got to get an another batch of ships in bottles and they're throwing those out into the ocean. And then the vision is that there are so many ships in bottles out there that they all crash into each other and they sink each other and they go to the bottom of the sea. <laughs> and then meanwhile, on the shore, there is a group of artists, music lovers. There's this community of people who's building this and they're building this big, beautiful ship together. There's this community of people. And then they build the ship and then they sail it off into the ever setting sun. And, you know, they, they basically, they win in the end and they're the people basically who took the time to help build culture and get aboard this, you know, this ship and, and have, uh, have this beautiful experience. So here it is. It's called Ship in a Bottle.
So that is ship in a bottle. Uh, yeah, I wrote that 15 years ago and it is as relevant today. <laughs> Thanks, Sam. <laughs> it's nice after uh <laughs> still stands up. Yeah, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it's crazy that it's still relevant. <laughs> thanks, Kevin, for the claps. All right. Well, thanks everyone so much for being here and hanging out, going on this uh, little journey with me. So the next next session I'm doing is going to be this coming Friday. So in a couple of days' time. Um, also at 7 p.m. Melbourne time. I wonder if I'll do that earlier. I'm not sure. <laughs> lots to think about yeah great 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 um yeah so what we've done the last two sessions is we sort of talked about the past thing of the music industry then today we've been talking about okay well what's the future and how do we create it then in the next session I actually want to uh like implement that like embody that and give you a sample of what that would look like and what would that, what that would be like. So, um, so we're going to create the experience um, of this deep cultural connection we've been talking about today. So many of the elements that we have been discussing, I'm going to uh, bring them into the next live session that we have together. So yeah, I don't want to give away too much about how we're going to do that and what, elements we're going to use but um it's going to be a really special stream where i'm going to share some new work as well that i'm working on we'll collaborate on some music i already am giving too much away uh and we'll embody all the things that we love about music and culture like authenticity quality connection creativity consistency growth life performance and more so it's going to be a little action-packed session um yeah, no, I won't say any more, but I think it's going to be really fun. And I know these last two sessions have been very sort of theor very theoretical, or very, I don't know, just concept based. So it'll be nice to sort of jump in and get to the point where we can sort of experience all this stuff that I'm talking about. So Q&A, if you've got any questions, let them rip. Be good to have a chat about it all at some point. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, it's a lot to think about for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Like it is a, quite an abstract concept, this thing of culture, you know, like I actually learned a lot today of sort of just going through and researching it even more, yeah. making me think about it on a deeper level. Yeah. We hear about culture all the time. Uh, you know, we want to improve the culture or mm. whatever, but it's so abstract. But then when I brought it down to just thinking about like values and behaviors yeah. and things we want to share and ways we want to act in the world. I was like, oh, that, mm. that's a good practical framework. Yeah. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of deeply rooted issues with, you know, just how people value things, you know, like yeah. people value money and don't really value art and creativity. You know, people um, worship celebrities and very interested in them but not necessarily in people who create the work behind them or whatever like people's perceptions of where the hard work and what the value is is very skewed <laughs> yeah yeah I, I totally agree totally agree yeah and I, I mean it's one reason i wanted to do this series because i was going to do a different type of series but and i knew this was like pretty information heavy and a little bit of an education program mm. like like you know many many people will be sort of up to speed with um you know these developments over the last it's really been happening over the last you know 20 years or whatever um but it's helpful i think to think about them on a deeper level and reflect and go okay what's what's really going on with the recording industry and with streaming and and stuff and then how can we mm. do something how can we navigate it in a way that, yeah, that we're proud of that, that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Ah. Mm. Do you think like people on social media and stuff, like some people who re really have a big presence, like, I don't know. I feel like some people like that really 
engage with their fans like people like mm. um i mean one example in the pop space like say charlie poof i feel like he had that whole TikTok series with like every song on his previous album pretty much from conception to the final thing and got people very like invested in it and they would like go live on like instagram and stuff and talk to people fairly regularly but up to the album launch i feel like some people are using those kind of platforms to really connect with fans and stuff as well yeah yeah definitely like i think there are a lot of people who are are doing it in an interesting way where they are connecting um a lot and i think a lot of the people who have be, have gone on to sign on to some type of major label or whatever in the last 20 years started that way you know they sort of built built their own culture and then the record label yeah. could see you know something blowing up here and then they just sort of pour more money on it and and give it a yeah, lot more yeah. reach and so yeah i think that's definitely a thing and i i don't see anything wrong with that either like I know it sounds like a, a lot of the things I'm talking about are really sounds like I'm just smashing um, like major labels and whatever. I I do feel like they play a role and, and they're important. Mm. Um, but we just have to flip that pyramid, you know, like there's a music, yeah. musician and music lover. And yep. then the industry is like the third piece, not, not the thing that gets between mm. the music. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Totally, I think just yeah. to, a changing of the guard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I think it's yeah. like many things, you know, like we have to decide that we're taking back control, like individually, like, oh, I'm not going to wait for X, Y, Z to approve of what I'm doing and then fund me to make X, Y, yeah. you know, that it's like, oh, I'm going to be proactive. I'm going to connect with people who are into what I'm doing. Um, and I'm going to lean into my authenticity and, you know, my quirks and yeah, whatever it 100%. might be rather than, oh, I need to like cut off parts of my creative vision so that I fit into this mm. kind of thing. So, yeah, I think what you said about authenticity is so true. Like, yeah. 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 I think so too. Yeah. I've, I've been listening to and just noticing lots of, people online that I follow, they really just, they just are authentic. Like, and that actually is the thing that makes them, uh, you know, win in the end. Like mm. <laughs> people, I think people have become tired of um, being told what to like or just followed around by a song, like at the supermarket mm. and then on the radio. Yeah. And then it's like, Oh, I don't even like this song. Mm. Um, and people kind of, what they do want something deeper i know that's how i feel it sounds like you you know yeah you feel that too definitely and, and uh yeah mm. awesome well that's good that uh, means we're we're in good company look forward to hearing more ideas on friday be yeah great. cool cool great yeah me too it's going to be a fun one i feel like we're gonna we're gonna try a couple of new things that i haven't done before so it's gonna be good cool thanks me excellent thanks kev um thanks everyone we might leave it there and uh look forward to seeing seniors on friday and then there's also another one on the following monday where we're going to have a bit of a we're also going to have a bit of a party i'm going to share some more things and um do a bit of a do a bit of uh fun stuff <laughs> again i'm just uh, keep it keeping it chill keeping it secretive for now but um it's going to be good um all right. Peace out. Thanks again. And I'll see you uh, on Friday. Bye. Thanks for being here.